Now, coming to classification of water. Okay, water is classified as rainwater, spring or well water, then we have what is the river water and sea water. Now, rain water is the purest form of natural water, children, okay, and because it is formed by the natural process of distillation. And what happens here is the water from the water bodies gets evaporated to form water vapor. And when this water vapor will reach the higher levels of the atmosphere, this vapor will condense to form water droplets, which will form clouds. And when these clouds are saturated, this will come down as rain. So there are two processes, both evaporation and condensation involved. And so through this natural process of distillation, rain water is the purest form of natural water. Okay, but however, what happens is during the course of its fall, this rainwater picks up a large amount of dust particles. It may dissolve gases like uh, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide also. So when carbon dioxide dissolves in water, it forms carbonic acid. And this carbonic acid, when it falls on the limestone, or it will cause the erosion of limestone. Okay, erosion of lime and limestone. Okay, and then now what happens is in industrial areas, children, where there lot amount of fossil fuels are used, carbon dioxide uh, and along with that, uh, air pollutants like sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide are emitted into the atmosphere. When these gases like sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide, they dissolve in the water, that, that is the rain water, they form sulfuric acid and nitric acid. When these acids come down, okay, and when the acidity of the normal rain increases, the acidic nature of rain water increases due to the dissolution or due to the formation of these acids, that is sulfuric acid and the nitric acid, it is known as acid rain. And acid rain is a very harmful Thing, children it has a very harmful effect on the environment when it falls in the water bodies it increases the acidity of water and this will destroy the marine life when it falls on the buildings okay it will erode the buildings Taj Mahal, one of the seven wonders of the world, children, is losing its beauty because of the effect of acid rain. Okay, and then. Uh, other impacts of acid rain would be on the soil. The soil fertility is lost. The plants are, uh, are not able to grow. Okay, and this will also kill tiny microorganisms or tiny animal life like earthworms and all which are present in the soil. Okay, then coming to the spring water children. Now what happens is when rain water falls on the surface, the upper layers of the surface are porous. So water will percolate inside. So as this water will percolate inside, deep inside, through the porous layers, it will reach a layer, a non-porous layer. Okay, so as the water, okay, as the water falls because of the rain, it will seep through the porous, okay, this is the porous layer, it will uh, seep to the porous rock and soil and it will reach the impermeable rock. This impermeable permeable rock, okay, is non-porous and it will not allow the water to seep in. So water gets collected here above the impermeable rock and this collected water is known as an aquifer or it is known as a water table. So when we dug wells, we dug the wells deep and into to reach this water table okay and also that is it could be the normal wells or tube wells they are dug deep into this water table to attain to get the water now this water is known as well water 
okay now what happens children basically on a hillside okay when this same phenomenon occurs over a hillside what happens is the water similarly when it falls on the hills it will flow or uh, it will seep through the porous layers of the hills and it will uh, enter into uh, the impermeable enter above the impermeable uh, layer of the hill and it gets collected above this impermeable layer and wherever there is an opening or wherever there is a slope this water comes out as spring water okay this water will come out as spring water so spring water and well water are really pure water because these waters these two are free of any suspended matter so why are they free from suspended matter is because as the water percolates through these upper porous uh, layer okay it is passing through several layers of sand and gravel so it is filtered and it is becomes completely free from suspended matter okay and moreover as it is passing through these layers it is going to dissolve several minerals so spring water and well water is rich in minerals and they are free from suspended matter and they can be consumed directly without any purification required provided they are uh, collected in clean vessels under clean environment is that clear children okay then next coming to the next type of water is the river water okay coming to the river water river water is a form of surface water children okay and this river water is basically it is an impure form of water and it receives water from various tiny streams known as rivulets other streams the sewage and it is also fed from the melting of the glaciers okay so the water in the river is basically impure because it contains two types of particles one is it has the suspended impurities okay it has two types of impurities the suspended impurities and the dissolved impurities okay suspended and the dissolved impurities so what forms the suspended impurities suspended suspended impurities in river water consist of any uh, organic matter like any uh, dry twigs some dead leaves some tiny dead organisms or it may even contain bacteria okay and then it also has fine clay sand pebbles all these are suspended impurities okay and then uh, coming to the dissolved impurities the dissolved impurities include gases like oxygen carbon dioxide etc and they also include mineral salts like salts of calcium and magnesium so basically river water it cannot be consumed directly because of the presence of these suspended impurities it has to be purified before it is being consumed moreover these days a practice has become of uh, uh i mean if you are going to put in the sewage okay the sewage is dropped into the river water the sewage from the domestic uh, places okay is ultimately pumped into the river water and this sewage is a hub of microorganisms okay so there are several microorganisms present in water so water is being polluted because of the sewage which we been dumped into this river okay and also because of the action of bathing washing etc all these activities have made river water really impure and it is full of pathogens you know what are pathogens pathogens are disease causing microorganisms and there are several water borne diseases which are spread through water like cholera jaundice okay and uh, diphtheria typhoid these are some of the water borne diseases okay so river water should not be consumed directly it has to be purified it should be freed from the suspended impurities okay like the any uh, suspended impurities like any twigs leaves etc and also from the harmful microorganisms is that clear children the next form of water which we have is the sea water 
okay is the sea water seas are basically the rivers empty themselves into the seas and when the river empties itself to the seas it drops out all down all the suspended matter it has at its mouth and this forms a delta okay especially the silt which it carries down the hill okay is suspended at the mouth of the river when it empties itself into the sea and this is uh, this particular delta region is very very fertile okay and when this happens okay the river water it is going to be emptying into the sea and the sea water has a lot of dissolved substances in the form of minerals the sea water is having high concentration of minerals children it is said that one liter of sea water has 26 grams of minerals of which 24 grams is your common salt so because of the presence of high content of minerals okay the sea water becomes very salty and it is not suitable for consumption okay so basically in countries like gulf countries where there is water deficiency they are using sea water but they are carrying out the process of distillation to remove the dissolved salts and then they are using it otherwise direct consumption of sea water is definitely not possible is that clear children okay and then so the maximum amount of um, uh, dissolved impurities are present in sea water so how do we how do we find out like uh, how do we demonstrate this experimentally as to which water has maximum amount of impurities so for this we take four samples okay we take four samples in the uh, petri dishes or in the watch glasses I'm sorry okay we take it in watch glasses okay or evaporating dishes this is a b c and d okay in a we will be taking the rain water in b we will be taking the spring water in c we will be taking the river water and d we will be taking the sea water and we will heat these okay until the water is evaporated and the solid residues are left out okay we will see that rain water has very less amount of dissolved minerals whereas spring water does have some amount of dissolved minerals and river water has lot amount of dissolved minerals and maximum amount of dissolved minerals are seen in sea water is that clear children okay and then we have an experiment to show that okay plants transpire okay you know what is transpiration children okay what is transpiration transpiration is a process by which okay plants lose water excess water in the form of water vapor from the aerial parts okay and how to demonstrate this we take a tiny twig in a beaker okay we take a tiny twig in a beaker and fill it in water and on top you're going to pour oil children this prevents the evaporation of water okay and we are going to enclose this in a in a bell jar okay and same thing we are going to set, take another setup in which we are going to just take simple water without the twig and this also we enclose it in a bell jar this forms our control and this forms our experimental setup so after leaving this particular setup in sunlight for two about two hours we see that the inner side of the bell jar there are water droplets seen now where did these water droplets come 
it can't be from the water which could have evaporated from this because we have poured a layer of oil over it. So this water is the water which has been given out by the plant in the form of water vapor. So the plants give out water in the form of water vapor okay by the process called transpiration. So this water vapor which was given out by the plants has condensed on the walls of the test tube to form water droplets. Is that clear children?